In this video I'm going to make a dust roof for the CNC machine. I'm going to base mine on a two part design which uses magnets to attach the brush section to an upper part which is clamped onto the spindle. You can see this parametric dust shoe by cncrouterparts.com and a similar one by Kent CNC which I'm using as inspiration. They sell for quite a lot but the material cost shouldn't be too high. The main difference I will make is splitting the bottom section with the brush into two so I can more easily remove them when changing bits. I'm cutting out a practice piece of 9mm MDF to check the design before I use more expensive acrylic for the final version. I made this design from scratch using an older version of ArtCam, however this version isn't available anymore and the subscription software is really expensive. But you can create vector files for CNC using software like Inkscape for free. So this thing has come out really well. I'm really impressed by how long it took to cut. The finish is not too bad considering I used a 1 8 of an inch bit that was probably about 30 mil long, so it's quite a long bit. Um, you know, if I use a smaller bit that's actually held up in the collar a bit higher, I'd probably reduce some of these uh, lines at the bottom, which are, to be honest are barely visible. That is a really good finish. And uh, the thing that I suspect, and I'm just going to double check this now, look at that, barely went through to the wasteboard. This measured as 9.12 millimeters. I set that in the software and it did not cut into the wasteboard at all, it's so accurate. I can't believe I've built a machine with birch ply plates and it cuts better than the bloody X-carve. It is difficult to clamp stuff down on such a small bed. I feel like I'm really wasting a lot of material just because I'm trying to hold everything flat. Uh, that really should have been all the way up there but I was a bit nervous about putting uh, the metal mending brackets so close to the edge and also, of course if I clamp something like this I don't have any room. Because of the fixed design of the top section I'll have to make different bottom sections with various lengths of brush to cover the different bit to material depth combinations. Uh, so I've bought a couple strips of this uh, brushed draft excluder. Uh, each one was about two quid from uh, my local Wilco's. And uh, obviously I've done the sensible thing of actually cutting the template and test dust shoe out before I had a chance to measure um, the metal along here. It's a little bit bent because I've already tried to tried to bend it. And um, this all comes out. So this is a pretty decent price for two quid. Um, I've already spent four for this. And what I'm going to try and do is just check whether I can cut it, how it's assembled, whether the brushes fall out, um, if I can bend it, and so on. I did look for flexible brush draft excluder but couldn't find anything here in the UK. The rigid stuff in contrast was really cheap. By the looks of it, um, I think the way this is made is there's a wire that goes in the center of the brush which is flayed out like that uh, and then it's folded over um, with this uh, piece of aluminium to keep it in position and that sort of crimps over the central um, rod or whatever is in there. In retrospect it would have been easier if I had designed the grooves for the brushes as a collection of straight lines, but this might have impacted the feng shui of the machine. Alternatively I could have used ethylene vinyl acetate or EVA craft foam sheets. You can get these in various thickness and they can be glued and easily cut out.
I decided to make a template to clamp the brush strip against and create the shape I needed. The machine might seem a bit slow at the moment but that's because the acceleration is still left at 10mm a second. As I'm still getting to know how this machine operates, I'll play around with that and other features when I feel a bit more confident. The channel is a little tight for the brush so I'll adjust the vector file to compensate. I am now drilling some holes into the acrylic to work out the offset needed to get as tight a fit as possible for the magnets I'll be using. Okay I've just spent sort of an hour just trying to cut different uh, holes out. Um, doing area clears just to see whether I get the settings right, the feed rate and the step over and so on uh, so that this uh, seven mil um, magnet can actually fit inside and uh, manage to get it to a point where I've had to hammer it in and I can't actually get it out now um, but that's not a bad thing because essentially I want this to be um, stuck in there and if I can avoid using any glue that's even better. It took a while to get the settings right but in the end I used an RPM of 15,000, a feed rate of 620 millimeters a minute and a plunge rate of 200 millimeters a minute and a thing no one ever tells you a step over of 25% of the bit width. I'm using a 1 8th of an inch bit which is 3.175 millimeters so 25% is roughly 0.79 millimeters. Knowing and setting a realistic step over is important because I'll be doing an area clear for the space needed for the magnets and brushes. The bits are quite long and this can affect the speed and step over. Shorter bits are more rigid therefore you can go faster and longer bits can more easily flex and therefore should be ran a little slower. The chips look amazing on this. I mean that's Nothing's not, it looks like snow. Look at that. So I made a few mistakes in the end, cracking the acrylic where I would pass the clamping bolt through and realizing I wanted to change the design after I'd cut parts out. Ah, oh, you fuck. Fuck. The size of the machine screw heads were a little too large and left a gap between the top and bottom pieces of acrylic. I'm not sure how that will affect um, the extraction if I'll be pulling air from here as well as obviously from the bottom. I eventually cut a few different versions as I went along and even improved my drilling technique. This is how I drilled the hole for the clamping screw, learning from the mistakes from the first attempt. I used a centre drill bit to first mark where I would drill through and also placed a piece of MDF between the gap to prevent the pieces flexing. I added small 1 8 of an inch through holes where the magnets would fit so I could push them out if I ever needed to, and I did. I also noticed that magnets become weaker if they are struck. So here's some advice, don't use a hammer. I eventually changed two machine screws with smaller diameter heads because one magnet was moved out of alignment when the acrylic was clamped to the spindle. These new machine screws were also a little thinner, but I could use the 1 8 of an inch through holes to push the magnets back so they made a positive contact. And then I just simply push. The last thing I did was use larger garage door draft brushing to make a second dashu attachment. I had to cut each section in half so I could shape and push them into position. This was arduous and my hands were aching afterwards. That was hard. 
So you probably want to see this in action. Here it is. I'm cutting a piece of MDF. I'm actually cutting a test plate for the second version of this CNC machine. I designed it on Fusion 360 with parameters to help me develop the design and solve some of the problems with the first version. The joke is I have redesigned the CNC machine to the point now that if I make a new one I will have to also redesign the dust shoe. So this is not the ultimate dust shoe. Anyway if you'd want to see the walkthrough video where I explain what I've done on Fusion 360 with the new version of the CNC machine I'll link to that at the end of this video. Thanks again for watching. Thank you.